Sharks, the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show, featuring Dan Harsha and Dan Allman. This week's show, we're highlighting the latest in music, life, and we culture. We different eyes. Yo, 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 this is Dan Harsha, and this is the Guitar Gurus, and with me always is... It's Dan Alden here. How you doing tonight, bud? Hot, 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 hot. Yeah, man, it's back. Man, I feel normal now having you back here in the studio yeah. two weeks in a row. Shit's going down. The show's flowing. Exciting news is happening, man. It's episode 76. How are you feeling, sir? Oh, yeah, I'm feeling great, man. It's a 76er right here, buddy. We're, uh, you know, we're back at it with with uh, full force here inside the studio, which is awesome. It almost feels like it, it was there was never a period without. Right. It's just like a bicycle here. That's right, dude. Um, and I'm going to pop me an ollie right off oh, the gate, yeah. man. I'm thirsty tonight. So, dude, you ready, man? Yeah, Are you yeah. Good? All right. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Oh, you go right ahead. All right. I'm going to go right ahead. Right. You jump in later. I will. All right. Listen to the sound of that here. Oh, on now, a, that was a pop. What a hot summer day, man. This is perfect. Oh, man. Dude, another week down. Uh, sorry. Taking swings here. Right, man. Yeah. Another week down. Exciting news. Um, this is uh, another soft opening for our show. Um, we're back to the normal template this week, minus the Prime Street Grill review. Right. Got to reach out to those guys this week. I'm going to see what's up with them and see if they're ready to come back aboard and do their thing. We'll just give them another week to get it all adjusted. So with, um, I just want to shout out last week's show, then I'll lay out everything for this week's show. So last oh, week's show, we had District Bar Talk on. I'm all over the place today. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's happening, but shout out District Bar Talk. They were on last week. We got to know Jeff and the gang and, and their podcast, and, and they're doing their thing in Southern Maryland. They're doing a great thing, man. I enjoy their show. Right. So, I mean, it's it's really cool. I mean, it's two different shows, our show and their show, and we and we exist, and we're happy to exist together, and I think it's just awesome. Yeah, man. Southern Maryland's having a podcast uh uh, I don't even know what you want to call it. It's almost like an evolution. Right. I mean, everybody's got them, but I mean, we're, we're hitting home runs. There's some big major shows in the Southern Maryland market, um, and you can see the production behind them every week. Yeah. So, And they're one of those shows. Um, they're right up there with us, man, cranking out episodes on a weekly basis. They get it. They understand. Like, keep your audience engaged. you got to be there every week, man, every same time. So yeah. it's all good. I love to have them on. I, I know a lot of those guys outside of the podcasting world, too. So that's cool. And, yeah, I wish them all the best. And hopefully we're handing off the award for best radio personalities to them next year, if not retaining it for ourselves. <laughs> You'll never know which way I want it to really go. But they have goals. They, they want to steal that thing. And I'm sure they, they, they have a great shot at it. They work hard. Right. Uh, it's a great show. You guys get over there and check them out. I'm more worried about them than I are anyone else. How about that? I are not worried either. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those days, dude. Yeah, that goes without saying. I think some of you will understand what that means. But right. yeah, we're not worried. We're not worried about others at the moment. We're worried about you guys. Right. Because you guys are what matter. And it's Music Talk Radio here on the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru <laughs> Show. We're talking Southern Maryland's local music scene every week in and out in some degree in some form. Sometimes we spice it up with a little bit of culture. Like, I can't wait for Championship Wrestling to get back down here so we can have cool buddy Bobby back on. Yeah. That, man, talk to that guy in, in forever, it, it seems like. It's been a while, man. So I'm waiting for that to happen. Um, other things that's happened this past week, I actually... Uh, taped another tape for another podcast earlier today as a guest um i was on the behind your back podcast with bradley hartman talking all things sales you know the day gig stuff and we mixed in the gurus too he's a yeah. big fan i turned him on to the show um when that episode comes out in a couple of weeks i'm definitely going to be sharing it and ask everybody to check it out because it came out really cool and how he does his production Nice. So, big shout out to Bradley Hartman. Um, love being on your show. I'm, I'm trying to get him the book to come on the show with another guy. And we can talk about marketing for all the local bands oh, yeah. at, a, at a high level. Um, he has um, access to a guy named Josh Johnson. 
um, musician down in uh, Louisiana um, that's now into what we're doing in the day gig. There you go. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to have both of them on, and we can have, have a conversation right. about marketing, and maybe some of the local bands around here will hear that and go, hey, that's an idea. Let's run with it. All right. And that's what this show's about, is trying to help out the blue-collar musician, give them access to some stuff they just normally wouldn't hear on a normal basis. You're not going to hear this on the FM dial. <laughs> You're going to no. hear it on a podcast. You're going to hear it here on the Guitar Gurus. Yep. That's what you got to know when you're in Southern Maryland, man. <laughs> this is our market. We're trying to help you guys out. Um, and I, we love doing it, man. So yeah. I'm just trying to branch out, find different ideas for everybody. So y'all have an, a variety of ideas. And, you know, marketing, marketing, marketing is the key for the future with this music stuff. Absolutely huge right now. It's, it's more important now than it's ever been. Right. And so, like, it was funny when we were on the tape in the day or on the show, it's like, He's like, what, what was your earliest sales job? Well, my earliest sales job was selling my services to my brother so he would get me my first job at the mall so I could buy gear to be in the band. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes that far down if you think about sales on, a, on an everyday life thing. Yeah. So, you, was, you know, you may not be selling a product in particular. You may be selling you. A service. You're the product. Right. You got to look at it in every perspective. So. Yeah, and you don't want to shortchange yourself. Never. But yeah, I mean, so that's that's just called you know sales, you know. But it was a good show. I felt good about it, um, and I can't wait to share it. But shout out to him for having me on. So yeah. that's what I did. That was cool. That's awesome, man. Um, dude, just been playing bass, man. Bass, bass, bass. That's what I yeah. That's what I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear that. Right. I, I didn't know if you saw it on Instagram or on my Facebook story, but I was just jamming this like simple bass groove on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Put it in. Had a little killer little cup of cup at the end oh, you know and, right. and it was cool i'll show it to you on break if you yeah. haven't seen it yet yeah i'll check it out yeah but that was done on that base and that amp man nice like the craigslist caper keeps paying off man hey man that is all you need right there to go have a good time with right there <laughs> dude i kept saying all week and god delivered a base to me <laughs> you know it's like i don't need anything else man that thing's just perfect no, you don't need anything else dude it's perfect this is awesome but yeah dude that's what's happening what's up with you man Oh, wow. Where, I, I don't even know where to begin. Um, so I won't get into too much with me. I, I like to keep it <laughs> secret, you know, on the down low. I'm a man of mystery. International man. Uh, but I've just been doing the grind, man. Just grinding, 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 grinding. Work, 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 work. And honestly, a lot of work and not a lot of play, man. And I need to get back to balancing that back out again. I hear you, man. It's yeah. wearing on me, I'll admit it. Hey. So we're getting there. I'm here. With you in here, once again, which is a great start to getting back to getting that time in my life that I need to feel, you know, to make my soul happy. All right. Well, dude, I hear you, dude. So let's launch off. It's episode 76. We'll get it started. Yeah. All right. All right. So straight up off the gate, we're going to have David Higgins on from the Southern Maryland Chronicle for the famous Higgy on the Beat segment. Yeah. So Higgy's going to come on the phone. We're going to talk to him. We're going to talk Southern Maryland music. Talk some little music history, some birthdays probably. It's going to be an awesome segment. It's Higgy on the Beat. Higgy Everybody loves beat. it, right? Yeah. After we talk to him, me and you will chit-chat again for a moment or so. Then we'll get Sean Kirkpatrick on the phone for Sean in 60 seconds. Sweet. Awesome spot plan for this week. Oh, yeah. I'll tease it right now. If everybody watched uh, local media, local TV in the D.C. area, you saw Sean on Channel 4 for that uh, that spot on that TV thing that they filmed. Remember? Yeah. He, he talked about that from last week's show. Yep. So that came out this week. We're going to talk on that. And then we're going to talk on the jetty reopening over the weekend, too, because he was there with his dad helping him run sound. I cannot wait to hear so, all about that. That's going to do so two awesome parts that we're going to get to with Sean. So Sean in 60 seconds, an awesome segment every week is actually got the star beside it this week because it's going to be super awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then after that, we'll take a break, reset up, and then we're going to come back and get into our second half of our normal format. Wow. Check this out. So we got two guests tonight, two featured guests, and some really cool news. So, okay, so first up, we're going to get Bronco Hobzik on the phone. He does Bronco Hobzik photography. He's working with a lot of local bands on around here, and, of course, he has, um, he's been filming a TV series um, about crabbers in Southern Maryland that we're going to touch on. I watched the first episode of it. Man, and it kicks ass. Yeah. 
dude, it's all about Southern Maryland. You know, I see the I see the film and I go, yeah, this is home. You know, so I watch it with that bias, but it's put together professionally and he's and it looks great. So we're going to talk to him about that and some other things band related with what he's done with bands in the past. And we'll get his take on the best gig, worst gig. Can't wait. So to get back a little normalcy with that, right? Yeah, man. Okay, and then after that, we're going to talk Island Music Guitar of the Week. Wow. How about that, We dude? are really returning back to normal in here. Right, dude. And this week, we got that beautiful Fender Ventura Jaguar, man. Nothing luck. Everybody loves a Jaguar, man. The post went crazy this week on Facebook. People are loving it, and it was cool. I can't wait to hear all about it. Dude. Right. Another a guitar of the week again. Holy smokes. Right. And then after that, we'll probably we'll shoot out for a quick break, come back in, and then our last featured guest tonight is a lady named Brandy Blackstone, and she runs the public relations and events for the commissioners of Leonardtown, Maryland. Yes. The town of Leonardtown. She's a part of that. Um, they reached out to the show. Um, we're going to partner up with them, and we're going to have our episodes on the town of Leonardtown's um, arts and entertainment district portal site. That's right. So we'll go over that and then talk about everything Leonardtown. So we'll get to know Leonardtown tonight. How yeah, about that, man? That, dude, that's so awesome, man. To get it partnered up with with them down there, those good folks. Man, this is amazing. Yeah, dude. So that, and that's the episode 76 tonight. So hopefully next week I'll get a couple bands on and we'll get a band again. We'll do that. I'll shout out. I did notice that Jay Shade's got a new band called Social. And yep. Fast Freddy Gillum plays in that band. So I think I might have to book them on because I need to talk to Freddy. You need to talk to Freddy. Well, dude, I sold Freddy a telly at, uh, when I was at Licks. Years ago, and delivered it to him at the dealership. So I'm going to talk to him about that Telecaster too. Nice. So, so I'm going to reach out to those guys. I'm going to see what's up with them. See if they want to come on as a group, as a band call, and we'll maybe do a band call next week. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see what's up. It sounds cool. They got a lot of guys in there. So, yeah. so we'll see what's up. But that that's what's on tap. That's what I'm feeling. And uh, I think right now, I think we're going to we're going to get the phone system cranking, and we're going to get a. Uh, David Higgins on the phone. What do you think, man? I'm ready, man. Ready Let's for get it on. on the beat. Give me some tunes. <laughs> All right, everybody. We got David Higgins from the Southern Miller Chronicle coming up next here with Higgy on the beat, right here on the Southern Rail Guitar Guru Show. All right, it's ringing, dude. Good evening, Gurus. Hey, Higgy, it's Dan. What's happening, buddy? Not much, brother. How you doing? Oh man, we're cranking in the studio. It's Tuesday night, and we're taping, and we're excited, man. How are you? I'm exhausted, but I am here and ready to roll. <laughs> Great, man. Well, hey, Mr. Alban, say hi to Higgy. Hey, buddy. How are you? Not bad, Mr. Alban. How are you doing this week? Loving life, my friend. Loving life. Well, that's a good thing. Hell yeah. It's good to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, Higgy, I know you're tired. Let's jump into it because I'm curious to know what Higgy on the beat got for us this week. All right. Good evening, Southern Maryland. I'm Dave Higgins for Higgy on the Beat, coming to you live from the Southern Maryland Chronicle Newsroom. This weekend will be in the upper 70s, the low 80s, with plenty of sun sunshine. So let's get started with what's on tap this weekend in Southern Maryland with your 10-ounce, 12-pack sampler, courtesy of Lynn Area. On Friday, Hills Country Store, Helen, Maryland, 6 p.m., West Rice. Also at 6 p.m. at Dockside Restaurant Sports and Sports Bar and Deal, you have the Bradley Turner Duo at 6. And at Romano Vineyard and Winery in Brandywine, Maryland, 6 p.m., Latrice Carr. At 7 p.m., Last Drop Country Bar in Hollywood, Maryland, you got the Parker Barrow Project. Parker Barrow Project is Dylan Turner, who used to play with Philip Michael Parsons and Megan. I cannot remember her last name. Um, so there'll be a, a release in their new stuff. They just had the album drop not too long ago. Right. That's cool, man. Local show. Hot yeah. Show. Uh, Seabreeze Tiki Bar in Mechanicsville, 7 p.m., only for tonight. And then at 8 o'clock, we have Justin Crenshaw will be at Toots Bar in Hollywood, Maryland. And never, oh, I'm sorry. Yep, 8 o'clock, Justin Crenshaw, Toots Bar in Hollywood, Maryland. On Saturday, 2 p.m., Deanna Dove will be at the Running Hair Vineyard and Winery in Prince Frederick. At 8 p.m., Toots Bar, you will have Backstage Pass. Also at 8 p.m. at Seabreeze, you're going to have Taboo. And at 9 p.m., Hydra Effects will be at Goose Bay Marina and Campground in Welcome, Maryland. On Sunday, 1 p.m., Fran, Fran Scuduri uh, will be at the Running Hair Vineyard and Winery in Prince Frederick. Uh, this just is what uh, Lynn has gotten just over the past couple days. He messaged me after he sent me this and said there was a lot more at it. So be on the lookout Thursday afternoon, 4, 4.30-ish, when we print the entire local music schedule up. 
Wow, dude. Someone yep, put the so, keys in the ignition and turned it, man. This yeah, so they, they just went straight from zero to 100 like it was nothing. Right. Wow. So everybody, it looks like everybody's getting booked. I mean, I know there's not there's not huge shows. I noticed there are some names on that list that Len sent me that are not performing right now. But members that are part of other group, acoustic groups possibly or solo acoustic are getting out there and getting their things. We're still under kind of the, the restriction of how many people can be in a certain area, what restaurants are allowed to do. Um, so there, it doesn't look like there are too many of them are booking the bigger names right now. Um, so you're getting more of the small acoustic acts, solo acts. I got you. I got you. Well, that's cool, man. I'm happy. All right, let's hit you up with some music history for June 11th. In 1960, drummer Tommy Moore made the fateful decision to quit the Beatles and return to his job of driving a forklift at Garston Bottle Works. He was briefly replaced by Norman Chapman, who was called into national service after three gigs. After going drummerless and mostly jobless for a few weeks, the band hired Pete Best on August 12th, only one day before they were to go to Hamburg to play a string of club dates. Worst decision he ever made. Right. I don't know. Forklifts are, <laughs> forklifts are kind of fun, man. <laughs> 1977. Casey and the Sunshine Band became only the second group after the Jackson 5 to achieve four U.S. number ones when the I'm Your Boogeyman went to the top of the charts. In 2005, Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin founding member and guitarist was awarded an OBE in the Queen of England's birthday honors list, and Queen guitarist and founding member Brian May was awarded a CBE. The CBE is an honor uh, titled Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, and the OBE is the Officer of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire. Those are two honors bestowed that are just under knighthood. Wow. All right, in 2011, Pink Floyd's 1973 album, The Dark Side of the Moon, re-entered the Billboard album chart at number 47 and reached the milestone of 1,000 weeks on the Billboard's charts. The album, which was released in 73, has done consistently well, reaching number one on more than one occasion. Monster. Monster. 2009, an 11-panel judge from the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals decided to review its decision on whether Led Zeppelin plagiarized Stairway to Heaven from the opening guitar riff off the Spirit's 1968 track Tars. In June 2016, a Los Angeles jury ruled that Zeppelin was not guilty of any copyright infringement. That's right. You don't mess with the mighty Zepp. <laughs> that was a reach. All right. That was Some a notable reach. births. 1947, Glenn Leonard, American R&B soul, sing and soul singer with The Temptations from 1975 to 1983. Also, 1949, Frank Beard, American drummer with ZZ Top, who had the 1984 U.S. number 8 and 85 U.K. number 6, 16 single legs. Beard is notable as being the only musician in the band without a long beard, an ironic feat, fact considering his last name. The band also had global album sales in excess of 50 million as of 2014. Love that. Love that story. Uh, notable local birthday on Friday, June, ele uh, June 12th, Wade Elliott of Spoiler Alert. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, right, Wade. There you go, Past buddy. guru guest, yeah. man. Yes. Multi multiple time guests. Yeah, that's right. Been on a couple times. Solo act and See, I listen. Hey, <laughs> not at the premieres lately. Where you been, man? Uh, working like crazy. I with heard. with Between the COVID stuff happening and last week protests. Yeah. Yeah, it's busy. I, I was in Southern Maryland last week. I know. I saw the pictures, man. Yeah. That's cool. So. Yeah, man. Uh, dude, that's awesome, dude. Higgy, dude, you're hitting home runs for the show every week. I love that you carve out time for us. It's really I love being here. Yeah, man. And we love having you, man. And this is just on fire. I'm glad that the, the 10 ounce 12 pack sampler is back. Yes, I was getting. I was it. getting really thirsty. <laughs> right, I'm just glad that it's back on, man, yeah, and it's cool. Yeah. Um, and then I look forward to getting back to some type of normalcy in the coming weeks. Yes, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, so we, we should be hearing from Governor Hogan either late this week or early next week on um, proceeding to stage two. Uh, sorry, stage two of phase two. I got you. Okay. Well, cool. Which would be, you know, that's kind of phase two had some uh, options such as indoor dining that was not opened up when he started phase two. Um, and he did say that they were looking at some things to coincide with what would be the end of the school year, which is coming up next week for most counties. 
So I'm looking for him. You know, I, I think right now they're kind of looking to see what happened with all these protests. Right. Um, in terms of uh, infections, hospitalizations, things like that. Um, but then we should hear, you know, next week. That, w- that was the impression that he gave was something is going to happen in terms of more phase two coinciding with the end of the school year. Okay. So. All right. Cool. All right, and that's your weekly wrap on news. Check me out on facebook.com forward slash Higgy on the Beat. And always follow me on the, follow the Chronicle on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash SOMD Chronicle or www.southernmarylandchronicle.com for all your local, state, regional news, weather, and sports. Have a great show, guys. Thanks, Higgy. All right, buddy. Take care. All right, all right man. Bye. We'll see you. All, all right, right, bye. There it is, dude. In and out, buddy. Dude, Higgy on the beat. Southern Maryland Chronicle. David Higgins, man. Yeah. Awesome stuff. How great is it that there is a a music schedule to report on again? Uh, I'm super thrilled. So nice. Super thrilled. Super thrilled. Um, Killer shows this week. Um, Take note, Parker Barrow Project. Yeah. That that would be a cool one to check out. Um, I would definitely go do that if I could. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's back, man. Yep, it's cool. It's back. This is cool. Um, everything's happening, and we're right here to document it, man. <laughs> that's, I, what, that's what we do, right? You call me crazy, man. But I was just thinking, man. Like the other day, I was like, imagine if we never got together to do this. What would the scene look like right now? I don't know. I mean, this is a hell of a lot of documented history over the last uh, year and a half. Year and a half, right? I mean. Yeah. I, I couldn't even comprehend what the scene would be like now. I don't know. It's hard to say. Right. I can speculate, but... All right, but dude, that's just how, how far the show's come, man. Yeah. I mean, from the days where we, could, we couldn't get anybody to come on. <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh, man, just trust me, man. It's going to work. Yeah. Just work. <laughs> I don't trust me. Remember yeah. that. Given the, I had a sales speech, man. I'm like, yeah, I uh, mean, I, I had faith in it, of course. You know, I knew we could do something here. Right. You know, we had to do something because we couldn't just talk about our favorite albums and then get flagged by Ugh. everybody taking was, taking it down because we're playing stuff we're not supposed to. I, I would still love to do that if there was some way to do it without any, any impeding. You know, I just want to talk about it. I'm not trying to sell their shit. Yeah, yeah, now, now, now we don't work for them. We ain't selling their stuff. But I will tell you how I like the, how it sounds and how yeah. you made it. Right. Like, yeah, definitely. But yeah, we don't have any problem with people listening anymore. We yeah. just got to keep listening, so. right? And we're, and we're here every week, grinding it out. Yeah, you know, it's, it's real rad. Um, hopefully, next week we get Prime Street back. Well, that'd be nice. Yeah, talk about some food. Um, they're they're killing it, you know. They're just trying to get back to normal too. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm not glad rushing that, it. I'm glad that they've been been hanging in there. They're doing well. It, and I noticed the restaurant by where we go every day. Well, you know, the shop yeah. they've got a big tent set up and got tables out Dude, there. And there are people out there as soon as they open already at the tables. Eleven in the morning. That place kills it. I'm, I'm seeing margarita glasses at eleven a.m. I love it, dude. I thought about going over there for lunch, if you know what I mean. Right. I was wondering with all the with all the um with all the, the closures, all the shelters and places, how many people picked up bad habits during the day like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm that, sure it's happened. I mean, dude, it's nuts, man. You gotta keep your shit in check. You know, it's, it can get hard to do. I uh, know, but you know we're gonna get through this time. But dude, it's just been something else seeing what businesses are doing to adapt. To oh, I know, dude. And my, you know, my. My recycling guy left me a pamphlet for AA. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> I had to take it seriously. <laughs> All right, it's just a joke, people. But, well, dude, I mean, if, if you would have said that to us in 1999 or 98, it <laughs> probably could have been warranted. <laughs> that was, yeah, that could have been a true statement. <laughs> so we're doing okay over here, man. We're doing good, dude. And I, the businesses are hanging in there. I'm glad to see that they're uh, picking up. We're going to have some options here soon. Right. You know, of what we can do, man. And just, I'd love to sit at a table with a bunch of people and just talk about shit. Right, man. I just... Over some beers and shit, you know? I mean, dude, it's, 
what happened to the old good pastime? Hey, dude, when you get off work today, man, meet us for a drink and yeah. some wings. Yeah, well, that, just, that was a gone, gone, taken yeah. away. You're yeah. not allowed to do that. Yeah. How dare you unwind after right. work? In Go a home and setting. unwind, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can't do that. No. <laughs> yeah, man. So, I mean, it, yeah, I can't wait for it to get back like that, too, man. And, and see what happens, man, because we can't go on like this forever. It's just annoying, dude. No way. No it's way. annoying. Uh, you know, I wish everybody well. Everybody just have some damn decent hygiene for one. That yeah. would solve a lot of issues right there. Yes, it would. I mean, it did, you know, just we'll see how it goes, man. But with all the, in light of what's happening everywhere, to, there's no big high transmission rates in the coming weeks, then I think we're all... I think, dude, I, I really think, man, for those first three weeks when everybody was petrified, because we all were, no, no one lie, because <laughs> we didn't know, man. You, just, you were counting, you know, they were calling for mass crap, man, and yeah. and everybody sheltered in place, and I think everybody being like that stopped the spread, flattened the curve to, the, to more to the expectations than they ever thought. I really think that's what happened. And yeah. I'm okay with that. You know? And I am too. And everybody too. can speculate and come up with different tin hat, tin foil hat theories. That's fine. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot more people didn't go that, that they were speculating to. True. I don't want to get into all these theories. Oh, but, yeah, I know. But, yeah, it did help with people being responsible. Yeah, because for three weeks, people were at home. Yeah, but you can't be home for three months. Because at some point, you have to let your immune system go on and take it on man oh i know dude i know man. meet it head on i mean that's what they do with kids babies get on the floor call crawl around <laughs> you know you don't know what they ate they're eating something <laughs> right you gotta let them eat it dirt Whew. cat hair whatever you need right. all that in your life right you know what i'm thirsty oh i'm due too Ooh, that was a snap Ooh. Yeah, see, been working on that technique pretty hardcore for the last couple of months. Yeah, I practiced a lot daily. <laughs> That's right, man. Oh yeah. So, dude, I'm playing bass guitar big time right now. Yeah. You see the rig right there? I see it, dude. It's rad. It's rad. It's, it's rad. Cool, it's a cool little get up here, man. Yeah, man. It's gonna serve its purpose. Yeah. And dude, I, like I said, I'm uh, during break. I'm gonna show you that groove I was jamming on. In case you haven't caught it, it was on my Instagram. Yeah, I did not catch it. I'm sorry. I know. I get it. I get it. My social media is not important to you, Dan. I see you all the time. <laughs> I, know. I, know. I was at Sunday. You put it out. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was at. Uh, I was doing something all day that day. Oh, nice. Good. Good for you. I was at practice all day. Hey, that's awesome. Imagine hey. that. Hey, man. Did it go well? It went well. Love it. It went okay. Yeah. I so it. I missed it, dude. So I'll check it out. I really like this rig here. It's a good little deal. You can you can busk with this right on the corner and just set up and get just, yourself a you know tip jaw. Right, man. Get a little drum beat going, and you're in tent. And you're yeah. in, and you're made. And you're ready. Get a beat, buddy. Hey, exactly, dude. Yeah. Definitely could do that. That would be rad. That would be actually. cool. But so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm surprised you didn't make this the guitar of the week. I uh, did. Uh, good dude. We're saving it for our bass love show that I've wanted to do for a year. We're yes. going to do it. We're going to do it. All bass all the time. All the bass. All the bass. But yeah, man, I've been just been jamming all weekend. Just Good. getting getting familiar with it, man. It's yeah. really cool. It is very cool. Yeah, nothing beats a Fender Jazz bass. Yeah, That's she's, all I'm saying. She's very good looking. Yeah, maple neck, maple fingerboard, black block inlays. Can't ask for nothing better no. than that, man. You got that awesome binding there. Oh, yeah, the black binding, dude. Binding on a guitar neck is just awesome. Dude. Yeah, it looks sharp, man. Yeah, so happy with how all that went down, man. Sweet. All right, dude, let's transition, man. What do you think? Sean in 60 seconds? Ready. I'm ready to hear about all this Channel 4 news. Yeah, let's talk the, to it. Let's talk to the superstar. The, the jetty opening. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, hey, dude, give me some soothing tones. All right. Hey, it's time for Sean in 60 seconds with Sean Kirkpatrick. Right here on the Gurus. Oh, it's ringing. I hope he picks up. He's too fancy for us now. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Come on, Sean. Good evening, Gurus. Yeah. How you doing, Sean? What's up, buddy? I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Dan? 
dude. We're doing the show. We're taping it. We are getting it in, man. We're excited to talk to you this week. You got big shit happening. You're on TV. And the, <laughs> and the jetty reopened. I got Alban in the house again. Second week back now. Say say hi, Mr. Alban. Hi, Mr. Alban. <laughs> hi, Mr. Alban. Oh, well, hello there, Mr. Kirkpatrick. How are you, sir? I am doing fantastic. How are you? Man, I'm doing well, dude. Dude, I'm we're excited to hear what you got for us, man. Now that you're a you know big TV star, uh, I, pre- <laughs> I appreciate you spending some time with us this evening here on the show. And uh, <laughs> uh, I'll do it every week if you want. I don't know if you guys are into that idea. I think it would be cool. That would be a neat <laughs> idea. We'll call it. We'll call it. Sean in 60 seconds. How's that That's sound? Yeah, yeah, man. Dude, the history repeats itself. My man. I'm glad to hear you're doing good, buddy. <laughs> yeah, man. So ju- let's jump into it, man. You talked about it last week. You said you met up with the Channel 4 people, um, and the piece came out over the weekend, and I'll, I'll let you take it from there, man. Well, yeah. So, um, I mean, <laughs> to be honest, like, this is actually the – the fourth or fifth time that I've been on local news stations before. So the first time that I was on the news, I was 12 years old and I was at a event in West Virginia, Summit Point Raceway doing a production with my dad and Wynn Krozak for an event called Hyperfest. And I was just hanging out um, and the president of PRS Guitars, Jack Higginbotham came up and uh, brought me up on the stage during a product toss. And sure enough, there was like three or four different news stations there recording the entire thing. And I'm just throwing products and stuff. I, I, at one point, I accidentally like accidentally pelted somebody in the head with a thermos. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and when um, people people say that you like, you know, just because you got on the news, you're TV star and da 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 da, and it's like, you know, it's it's it's, it's cool. I, I don't don't get me wrong, but you know, I mean. It, it, it happens to a lot of people and you know it's not that like everybody in the world saw you or now everything's going to change right um but uh yeah i was it's it's i mean it is pretty surreal though every time it does happen <laughs> you know you're like oh man what's this mean right right hey and it's but hey, it was, it's nice to be on the news that many times and you're not part of a tragedy yeah Good call. yeah that's that's, that's definitely cool. a a bonus that's a big bonus yeah yeah um it's it's honestly just been it's just weird um when because it, it, there's been more times that i've been interviewed to like be on the news than i've actually been on the news so right. like someone will like someone will come up and they'll be a, a like an amateur journalist and they'll say we're we're with wbal tv 13 da 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 or this, that, and the third thing, and then they'll do an interview with you, and then you'll sit there and you'll spend like 15 minutes with the person, and then never, ever see the person again, never even figure out where that video or that, that footage went, and like, you, like if you, yeah, you'd never, you never know. I'm, I'm, yeah, I've been in that situation before, so I don't know. Yeah. You can imagine that. They have no idea if it ever aired, was shown, no, no idea. Right, and I mean, most of the time, this stuff happens in like Delaware or Florida or New York or some shit, and I'm just like, okay, uh, <laughs> tell your friends to send me a video of it. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty so. wild stuff, man. But dude, it was, it was an awesome piece. I, I enjoyed it. It was really cool, and it got the message out, man. Bands are coming back. They are. Um, a lot of them are, but I, I think. But what I, what they didn't really portray in what I was trying to tell them was that a lot of bands aren't coming back. I've already heard about multiple different musicians and, and bands that, that that aren't making it through the COVID thing. And, and it's either due to the fact that they had to get real jobs or because they realized that um, whatever their real job was, need, they needed needed more attention. You know, there's all sorts of different factors in this whole quarantine thing that has kind of just rocked everyone's world and, and, and the musicians the musicians world anyway right yeah it's a shame but yeah one sentence that's, that's all I, that's all I need that's all you need man <laughs> that's it you got you got it going on you got the point across 
Yeah. I think yeah, yeah, just, no, I, I they, think it was a good one. They wanted to show it in the, they wanted to show some positivity on, for, on the news for once. So, I mean, that's a good thing. I know you were trying to convey the message of, hey, a lot of casualties, but I think for once they wanted to just say, look, here's something good. Here's, here's some yeah. good news for you. And, and, I, and, I, and I completely appreciate that. I'm okay with it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like good news every now and then. Yeah, man. But uh, one thing I really wish is, uh, like, if you're going to go to the bar now that we're in phase two, like, ask somebody what the fucking rules are. Yeah. When you get there, like, don't just assume it's fucking wide open. Like, obviously, it's not the, it's not the normal s- scene. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. So, so you reopened up with the jetty over the weekend. You helped your dad run the sound and do all that stuff. So, I, I hear the tone of your voice. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you had there was a lot of altercations in between the security and uh, and, and different individuals that are that were getting belligerent. Um, it's just people aren't really ready. For, the, for that kind of responsibility in a bar scene. You're asking a bunch of people to show up into a place, get inebriated and lose their inhibitions, but also hey, sit at your table and dance at your table or sit in your seat and dance, but you can't dance standing up over there and wear your mask if you're walking away from your table. But if you're at your table, then you don't have to wear a mask. We're not ready. I'm We're not, not ready, ready for this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm out. I'm out. Right. I'm out. Those are the rules. <laughs> Dude, it's too confusing. It's like, dude, I, I saw a guy get arrested on the beach because he wasn't wearing a mask on the boardwalk to get to the beach, where you don't have to wear a mask. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that stuff is is, is confusing, and, and I get it. It took me a while to honestly figure out exactly what the rules were, but just put in an effort for, for before you get drunk. Like, when you first get there, you know, you, you, you get the habit within, like, 15 minutes if you actually, like, try. All right, hold right. on, hold on. And then y'all are, hold on. When anybody gets there and they're sober, I'm sure it's all fine, dude. But as people get drunk, those rules go out the window, man. Especially yeah. mask on, mask off. Mask on, mask off. Right. <laughs> See? It's the that's- same thing as everything was still normal. The rules were out the window. It was a thing to be <laughs> right. four times. And, I mean, we get it. It's fucking stupid. It's just nonsense. Fucking security theater rules. But it, the only reason I was it, it really had my anxiety through the roof was because... I don't want to see it get shut down again, you know? Like, we, like right. we got one step forward. We don't have two steps to go back. <laughs> that's exactly right. And that's just it. One one misstep, and it's back to nothing again. Right, yeah, exactly. I'm with you there, man. Yeah, smart, smart. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I was I was pounding Honey Jack all week, and I couldn't get drunk. <laughs> Just, too just sitting there like, why are you not putting your mask on? Right. Why am I so mad about you not wearing your mask? Because I really don't care. But what the fuck? <laughs> wow. <laughs> but uh, um, on the important notes, the bands that came through were amazing. All of them. Um, we had... God, I, I, I'm awful. I can't remember who was there Friday night. Oh, yeah, it was fucking John Fraze. He was there like three times this weekend. So what the, what they're doing at most venues, from what I've gathered, is they're cutting the rates down to half half price, basically, for whatever band they want to book. And the bands are then, you know, coming back with trios instead of the full bands to make it worth it, you know? So we had a bunch of trios, like, playing Friday night and Saturday night. And Saturday night in particular, um, I mean, you know, towards the evening, you have the whole day crowd still hanging out there and they've been drinking all day they don't want to leave but at the same time like they have to free up some tables um it, it yeah it, it was it, it ended up being a clusterfuck but luckily they booked like trios at the nights so that you know people weren't getting too rowdy yeah was there is there a did they were doing time limits on tables or just you know I've no seen some I, I don't think like there that, was an but... official time limit um not that I, I mean, because I, I, on Sunday I went there and just like played the patron part, like waited 30 minutes for a table and everything like that. Yeah. And uh, I mean, but there was definitely like just an atmosphere of like, get the fuck out of here. We're trying to make money, but not, not like a, in a bad way, you know, like my mom and I were able to sit there and have a conversation after we finished eating. And I think it was more my, my personal feelings rather than 
everything else because I really I just felt so bad for all of the people that were working there like the security guards the bartenders and the and the wait staff because apparently the tips weren't even that good and they're all just as stressed out as I am right if not Man. more stressed out probably jeez it's rough it is rough man yeah. yeah. So if, if anybody's listening and they're going to go out to the bars while we're in this phase two bullshit, fucking give your server a massive fucking tip. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I approve of that. And also, I, I like what you said about know the rules going in. Find out what the deal is. Those yeah, are, I mean, it's just respect. It's, it's been simple common courtesy, really, or respect for the for for the establishment that you're going to. Exactly. Take care of yourself going in. Take care of them coming out. That's, yep. you know, that's it, man. Treat it like a national park, man. Trash in, trash out. That's it. Okay, that was a bad example, but... Right? No. Yeah, you can leave the trash there. People <laughs> for that, but... <laughs> but left it, left it like... Leave it like you found it. Exactly. Yeah, you know, be good. Be good while you're in places. You can enjoy right. yourself. Nobody's saying you can't have fun. You just don't. No, I mean... Yeah. That's the best part. Is like we did it. We like everybody that was there was having a great time. Good, there, dude. There was one point where I, I actually did was I did I actually did shed a tear. It actually really really hit me pretty hard. Um, on Sunday, there was um, there was a trio playing and they played like a. It turned out to be one of the couples like like anniversary songs or whatever, and they were sitting at a table on the dance floor, and so they started dancing by their table while they were really good at dancing so they made it a little farther away from their table than they than they they were supposed to be and they ended up on the dance floor in front of the stage and the security guard had to come over and tell them there was their dancing <laughs> and it was like the music stopped because of it it was the most depressing thing that i'd ever seen in my life oh. not the most depressing thing but you know what i mean like in that environment it was yeah. probably the the saddest thing that i've ever seen in oh. that environment a beautiful moment just done because ruined of because, of because of COVID. COVID. Yeah. Jeez. Wow. God. All right. Well, I've had enough of that shit tonight. Already. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring you down. No, right. You didn't. You didn't. You it didn't. didn't. This is what happened. Hey, dude, I, I loved it. Your your Channel 4 thing was awesome. I loved seeing the band on there. Give all the, the band members our love. We're thinking of them. And we got to get together to do our episode now that everything's loosening back up. So don't forget about that either, man. Oh, I definitely won't. We have um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on behind the behind the scenes right now, and uh, I'll keep you guys updated about it. I'll probably be able to tell you everything by next week, but I can't tell you everything right now. So I got you. <laughs> I got Fair you. I, I like the tease. Shit, you're hitting the promo. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Next week, Sean in sixty second looks yeah, intriguing man. already. It's gonna be dirty. Oh wow. Oh. I dig it. I oh, can't man. wait, man. You better have some answers next week after that tease. I got you. I got you. All right, dude. Well, we're going to cut you loose, dude, from the Guitar Gurus. Sean, we say thank you, and we'll talk to you next week, buddy. Thanks again, guys. You all have a great episode. All right. Be good, brother. All right. All right see you. Right, see you. Wow, man. Sean in 60 seconds. Sean Kirkpatrick. Yeah, man. Even on that note, that's wow. got me thinking. It's got me thinking a whole lot, man. Wow. I, I didn't have that perspective. I'm putting some two to twos together, how yeah. the whole thing went together. So next week, wow. Sean in 60 seconds, man. Mm. Uh, I just hope it's a positive message at the end of the call. It will be. Wow, man. I hope so. Wow. <laughs> that's the way to end that one, man. But wow, yeah, dude. Dude, the first half of the show is starting off with the bang, dude. It's yes, electric. Sir. It's energetic, man. It, it's first 45. We're at 44 minutes right now. So how awesome is that? We're right back on point. Look at that. Like nothing, to, you know, riding a bicycle, man. Like I said, we got this thing down to a science. Dude, it's it's something else, man, what we built here. This is really cool, man. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. Everything's just happening, and it's just really cool to do this for everybody and report on the local music, man. It's got all the drama. It's got a lot, man. We don't even touch on hardly any of the really behind-the-scenes stuff, you know? But to be able to do this every week still after all this, this is the bright the bright spot in my week, man. It really is. I look forward to Tuesdays, Absolutely. Man. It's really cool. It's it's, it's the build-up, the anxiety all day. I'm like, oh, man, the show's tonight. I got to... Uh, Get it cranking, get everything good, you know. Yep. Well, here we are, dude. We're rolling. Coming up on forty-five minutes. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a.
promo us, promo us out and get ready for the next part, man. What do you think? Yeah. All right. All right, dude. It's the Guitar Gurus with Dan and Dan. We're Southern Maryland's number one music, number one source for music talk radio. And we're here for the community. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Yo, 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 Alban, let's talk construction. All right, Mr. Harsha, what's up? Our good friends at Allied Renovations can offer the best value when it comes to replacing your home's exterior, whether it be your roof or facade. Did you know that? How does he do it? Streamlined operations. Jesse and his team have been part of the roofing community since 2015. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, Jesse has some of the deepest roots in our community. Did you know that? Why does that matter? Because you don't have to worry about the here today, gone tomorrow, contractor schemes that are out there you know he's gonna be around that's some great stability yes it is so if and when the time comes your home needs help with its roof or facade please don't forget to contact jesse wickline at allied renovations that number is 301-399-7031 once again that number is 301-399-7031 they are waiting for your call Tattoos last forever. They're a permanent statement about your personality and style. Do you want to spend the rest of your life with ink that looks like it's been done by some junior apprentice? Or do you want a custom tattoo from Christopher Lane Tattoos? Chris has over 10 years in the biz and uses the best ink and machines in the industry. Check out Christopher Lane Tattoos' Instagram feed today and you will just see for yourself that he does some of the finest work in the Southern Maryland area. Give him a follow today and you will just marvel over the attention to detail in his work. Christopher Lane Tattoos on Instagram is your start on a pathway to tattoo bliss. Book your appointment through Christopher Lane Tattoos' Instagram private messaging service for an exclusive bonus that only Guitar Guru listeners are eligible for. Follow Christopher Lane Tattoos on Instagram today. Yo, 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 Albin, let's talk site maintenance solutions with Cooper Construction. Okay, great. Why are we outside? I wanted you to see how Cooper Construction's handling my site with the installation of my new septic tank system. Oh, I'm loving all this heavy equipment I'm seeing. You need this kind of equipment for this type of work. You say, do you? Yeah, man. Cooper Constructions offers complete site solutions for septic tanks and mounds, lot clearing up the three acres, and most importantly, stormwater management. Okay, let me get this straight. Cooper Construction offers site maintenance for lot clearing, septic systems, and stormwater management? You are correct. Does Cooper Construction have all the credentials needed for this type of work? Yes, they do, my friend. Cooper Construction has over 20 years' experience in the construction world. How do we get a hold of them? That's easy. Just dial 301-683-7766 and ask for a site visit today. Again, that number is 301-683-7766. Give them a call. You can also reach them on the web at buildwithcooper.com. Cooper Construction. From site to site, they will treat you right. What's up, y'all? This is Sam Grow, and you're listening to the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show. The Southern Maryland Guitar Gurus. The only guys that would do a live broadcast from Dog Bag. We see each other through different eyes. Oh yeah, we're back from break. It's the Guitar Gurus with Dan and Dan. We're num- Southern Maryland's number one choice for music talk radio. How are you tonight, Mr. <laughs> Alvin, man? You know, I'm in good mood, man. I'm in a great mood. I'm loving life. Dude, I'm in a fantastic mood. Hell yeah. And it's only going to get better because I'm about to pop an ollie. Are you ready to pop an ollie? Oh, hell yeah. All right, man, let's do this. I'll do th- I'm going first this time. You go first. There it is. All right, now my turn. Oh, yeah, man. It's crisp. That crisp crack of that can. You know, this is what we do. I mean, the whole reason we do this, we say it's because we support local music. It's really so we can just talk and drink beer. Right, but we love local music at the same time, so it's it's just a menage a trois of greatness. Ooh. So that's why we do it every week. Oh. You just can't get enough. That's it. Right, well, dude, the first part of the show was fantastic. Uh, Higgy and Sean hit all the points. Yeah. Um, it is the 10 ounce 12 pack samplers cranking yeah. back up. It's that was great. Full return. Sean's got things happening in the news on TV. 
um, helping him open up the jetty, and then he left a call on a on an intriguing note of some something, some stuff's going down that he's going to report on next week, and it might get dirty. I can't wait for that. So already. that's a tease, man. I'm yeah. already looking forward to next week, but we got a show to handle for the second part of tonight, and we got two important featured guests and the guitar of the week to get to. So I'm ready to crank into it. Um, I'm going to get the phone system cranking. I'm going to get Bronco Hotzik on the phone, man. Bronco Hotzik Photography, um, big time in the local Southern Maryland market. He's taking pictures, and also he's making TV programming, and he's got this kick-ass show called Crabbers, man. So, dude, give me some soothing tones, and I'll crank them up, man. We've got Bronco Hotzik coming up next here on the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show. There it is, dude. It's ringing. Let's see if we can get him to lock in the signal and pick up. Come on, Bronco. Let's do this thing, buddy. Hello? Hey, Bronco, it's Dan from Guitar Gurus. You want to go on the air, buddy? Yeah, man. Sure. Awesome, dude. Well, dude, I'm in the studio. I got the microphones on. I got my co-host, Dan Albin, here with me. Dan Albin, say hi to Bronco. Good evening, Bronco. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. How about you? Oh, I'm doing great, man. Thank you so much for spending time with us this evening. We cannot wait to hear all about what you got going on, buddy. Thank you. I'm really happy to be on. Yeah, man. I'm excited to have you on here. Um, you're, you're friends with a couple of musicians in town that I know. Um, they're excited to see you on this week. Um, Mr. Grumbine, ex- especially. He's really <laughs> he's really excited to have you on here. Um, I'm excited to have you on here. We've been talking in the background before your appearance tonight. About what you got going on, and I and I'm excited for you, man. So what I'm gonna say is, why don't you tell my audience about yourself and what you have coming up for Southern Maryland this summer? Paint the whole picture of what Bronco Hodzik's all about, if you don't mind, please. Sure. Um, okay, I'm gonna try to give it to you in a in a sum up because it's it's pretty crazy. My life is pretty crazy. Uh, we love crazy here, <laughs> yeah. Bronco. We love it. Um, usually when I tell people my story, there's there's a couple of bombshell moments that, that hit, and it's it's kind of funny to watch. But Nice. Um, started, first love was, I was always into the arts, but music was my first love. Grew up a guitar player. Van Halen was it. Nice. Probably it's all I listened to for about like three years straight. Um, went to school for music. Um, got into a bunch of rock bands, started my own rock band, had triplets, <laughs> which Ooh. sort of, ki- yeah, that, 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 that's the first one. That, that sort of killed, uh, that sort of killed the band, uh, you might say. Um, so I, for a time I was in hibernation mode right. for doing anything artistic because it was, it was really just. Okay, I gotta, I gotta feed these kids. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. Dad, man. So, uh, but needless to say, you know, as you know, do, as an artist, it's hard leading a life that's not artistic at all. Right. Yeah. And uh, it was a real grind. It was really just, it's tough. I mean, doing something that I ended up becoming a contractor. I started a business and um, did that for a while and kind of fortunately it the business kind of pushed me out and it it got me into a a place of geez what do i do next and um the next thing that that was a big life-changing moment was my family we we up and moved to the philippines oh wow wow Uh, my wife's from there and um we saw an opportunity over there and uh, an artistic opportunity for for all of us really my wife's a singer she's a monster singer she's amazing oh wow yeah i mean just boy she's got some pipes wow. she sang for the president in the philippines so she was she was quite successful over there for a time Damn. and and my kids our kids needless to say they they got all these different talents from her side from my side so that got identified over there and so we ended up moving to sort of pursue 
all these artistic endeavors for the whole family. Oh, wow. That is and cool. And I'm back and forth quite a bit. Uh, I spend probably half the year there, half the year here. Uh, they're and still there. Yeah, they're there right now. So during the whole COVID thing, we've been apart, which has been really brutal. It's oh, been really tough. My heart out for you on that one, That's man. Tough. I can't even imagine. Wow. Yeah, it's. Uh, I I was there for the holidays and came back right when the whole thing was starting. So <laughs> it was incredible. On the flight back, uh, this was in February. Right. I think, yeah. Beginning of February, I, I, I flew back. And. You know, the, this was before, you remember how masks, oh, masks don't work, masks work, masks don't work. At that time, there wasn't, uh, I guess all the masks were gone, but it wasn't to the point where everybody had to wear masks. Or, or the, it hadn't gone full-blown yet. Right. Oh, wow. But on, but on the plane, everybody was wearing a mask. Everybody. And that's a that's a... From the Philippines to the DC area, that that's a it's about a twenty six hour travel experience. Oh my god, man, dude, that and sounds like just a, the biggest nightmare of nightmares. It, it's tough. It's tough. And I wore a mask throughout pretty much the entire way. <laughs> wow. Oh. So that was really uncomfortable. I mean. I'm, I'm sort of seasoned in my travels now, so it was just, meh, okay, that's all I got to deal with, all right, everything else, kind of a breeze as far as that, because I've been back and forth so many times, but, okay. Mm. anyway, so, uh, yeah, that's been very hard, but fortunately, I'm, I'm looking to go back uh, next month, and, um, you know, things seem to be easing up a little bit, so, it'll... It'll be really nice getting to spend time with them because it's been it's been a few months, a lot longer than we had hoped. But um, but because of all this, um, my newest project formulated because I needed something to do. Mm-hmm. And um, one thing I didn't mention was when we moved to the Philippines, I picked up. Photo- I was a photographer a long time ago, amateur, just noodling around with it and about a year ago I got really serious about it and started doing it pretty much full time right. any any kind of photography I could uh, a lot of band photography a lot of people you know <laughs> right. Mr. Grumbine being one of them Yep. Uh-huh. spoiler alert right and you did all their pictures we've seen right yep yep Yeah. Um, man, that, that's I've, cool I've, stuff I've shot I don't know how many shows of theirs and um, capture, trying to capture the rock, <laughs> right? And um, they, yeah, they're they're a great group of guys, um, super fun. And uh, through them, I've met, I, I, I kind of, well, Larry Ward, the bass player for Spoiler Alert, was in one of my bands. Ah, uh, ah, nice, good old Larry, good old Larry. Yep. Oh yeah, I love that dude. Oh yeah, um, and, I got a get, I got one of his guitars. I bought a guitar from him in my personal collection. <laughs> uh, I I actually you'll get a kick out of this. I, I'm looking at his bass right now. <laughs> Schechter. <laughs> I have his Ibanez actually. Oh, he gave you the Ibanez. Nice. Ah. He he lent it he lent it to me for my newest project, which I haven't gotten to yet. But um, yeah, that that is patiently waiting for me to to open it up and contribute some music for this project that I'm doing, which is a YouTube channel based upon uh, Marilyn Crabby. Right. And that all started uh, last year. Again, I was just looking for something to shoot, something interesting to shoot. So I I grew up uh, on the Chesapeake Bay as a kid and fishing and crabbing and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, you know what? Man, it'd be really fun to get out on the bay again. So I just went to a local crab house, talked to them. Hey, do you know any crabbers that would, you know, be willing to take me on board? And, and found somebody uh, close by to me. They took me out, went for two days, and it was honestly, it was it was a an aha moment or sort of a life changing shoot. 
Okay. It was it was it was amazing. It just the subject matter was amazing. Uh, it made me realize how little I actually know about the bay. How little I I, I thought I knew stuff. Yeah, I know what you mean but, by that. Yeah, I mean, and and still, like right now, I, I'm <laughs> I feel like I just have way more questions than than any answers. That's, and that's the beauty of it, isn't it? It is. That's, it's that's so it's so amazing, and it's right here. Mm. That's that's, yeah. the, that's the thing that's so amazing to me. You've got the Chesapeake Bay, which you know is right next to you know the nation's capital. You know, it's 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 the way I view it. It's the image of Maryland. You know, Maryland has this amazing natural resource. And a lot of people enjoy it. A lot of people have fun with it. And, and I was one of those for many years. I was a a boater and you know a casual fisherman and what and whatnot. But I really had no clue. <laughs> I still don't. But I, I'm getting a better picture spending just about every day on the boat with these guys. And so essentially, the the gist of the project is this: we're I've teamed up with uh, this local crabber to essentially tell the story as they see it. Because the way they see the Chesapeake Bay, the way they see crabbing, the way they see the wildlife, it's totally different than the way a recreational boater will see it or a weekend warrior fisherman will see it. I mean, it's, it's an intimate look at what is there and it every day there's you you never know what you're going to come into i I mean it's you you pull up wild they pull up wildlife in the pots that they i mean i i wouldn't be surprised if they find something that nobody else has has seen in the bay wow that is freaking awesome man but dude uh Uh, you no. you sent me the link to the pilot episode, correct? Yes, it did. Right, uh, it was amazing. Like I said, uh-huh. like I said, man, um, it's I'm into how video works, how to edit, and do all that. Um, and I love the subject matter because I'm from Southern Maryland. It's a home run already there, so no worries there. <laughs> um, but the professionalism behind it, I was like, damn, Bronco just served up a. Like you could be on, like like I said, you could sell that to Discovery, you know. If the, if the and then the, and they wouldn't have to edit it; they could just put it on. That's how that's how well done it is in my book. And um, wow. like I said, I sent you the link to my band's video. We did a couple other videos. I did all that stuff in house ourselves, so I know understand how the process is. And I'm like, bravo, man, because it, it's killer, man. I I dug the story and like. I, I want a full blown season. I want you to. I, I want a couple. I want a couple crews to go around with a couple different guys and get the story of one whole crabbing season from a, from a couple different people's vantage points. That's like how mm-hmm. big the, I'm thinking already on it. Because, dude, mm-hmm. you, you you got you got endless amounts of content right in your backyard, and you and you can tell the story in so many different ways. It's just awesome, and no one's doing it. That's the best part. Yeah, I mean that's what that's why we we saw this tremendous opportunity. I mean it's it's something it, it, you know it's a little difficult because the the industry itself, um, it, it's a very tough industry, and you know watermen in general are are uh, pretty secretive. Right. Oh, I know all the all the stuff that gets passed down to them generation by yeah. generation. I know. <laughs> So, uh, you know, fortunately, you know, the, the individuals that, that I'm working with, they're, you know, they, they really want to share w- what they're experiencing. Um, and it's not, it's, it's really to help just enlighten people and, and also to ask more questions. You know, they, they work with scientists uh, from time to time. Um, you know, they, they send them, you know, cool things that they find or they... You know they aid in their research and whatnot. So it's, you know, there, there's a, 
there's a disconnect, I would say, between what is happening in the industry and, and what the average Joe knows about it. And it's really our goal to kind of bridge that gap and show people, I mean, one, I mean, just the, the sheer beauty of what, you know, almost day to day. I mean, every day you go out, it could be similar conditions, but it's still different. So you can shoot the same subject in similar conditions, but it's going to be different because the clouds are different or there's a different haze and all of a sudden everything just looks different. So that's, you know, one amazing thing. Second, you know, just the lifestyle. It's so unique. It's it's kind of unlike any any other job that, you know, uh, I mean, it's, it's he- intensely manual labor, but it, it's so different than you know, say construction or something like that. Right. And um, and then on top of that, the wildlife. Oh my gosh, I mean, the wildlife, it's, it's just incredible. I mean, the other day, I was literally maybe two feet away from a great blue heron. Mm. And those birds are magnificent. Yes. I mean, it's just incredible. And, and they're very skittish birds too. I mean, if you've ever seen one, you're going to see it usually from a distance because if it, it sees you getting close, it's off. It's flying away. Right. And and there's this one uh, heron that flies around the boat. It, when they fish certain area, that's where this heron lives. And it knows. It comes out because it knows it's going to get a lunch. So <laughs> so it la- you know it lands on it lands on the on the roof of the boat. And I'm you know uh, wow. I'm there hanging on with one hand on my camera one hand for my life you know hanging on and it's pretty choppy <laughs> i try to get footage of this heron and it's just it's just magnificent and awesome. just we're going to be documenting all that kind of stuff you know throughout the the season showing we have several different type of content pieces one is like a cinematic vlog which tells their story so to speak um and then there's more uh there's different series that are more towards the wildlife that we encounter and then there's going to be other stuff like how to's you know how to uh you know properly eat a crab how to recognize the differences between male and female just kind of the definitions kind of um you know what's what and yeah to help know, out all the noobs the lingo and the jargon you know yeah, and all exactly that, all that stuff and, man and, and and you know I, I felt you know very you know prideful of, of my knowledge from the past and then I just get schooled on these subjects you know <laughs> right yeah it's... I mean I feel like such a, a lightweight next to these guys I mean I, I'm, I'm just I'm humbled by their you know um, I mean just their knowledge their I mean they've been doing it for so long that they're able to identify things I'm like huh what what, what are you seeing because I, I don't see I'm looking at what you're talking about but I don't see what you're seeing. <laughs> yeah. They probably can even call things before they happen. Like, you know what's getting ready yeah. to happen? I know I can tell by this condition or this. Here's what we're getting ready to get into. It just, they yeah. just know it that well. I think for me, what you're talking about with that that lifestyle is the work ethic is just amazing to me. It's an amazing work ethic. And they probably don't even feel like they've worked a day in their life because they love what they do. Uh, I could be wrong. I don't know, but I would imagine so. When you're out in that water, how could you feel like you're working? Well, I'll tell you this. I I probably haven't worked this hard in a long time, like <laughs> physically worked. Right. But this is <laughs> this is one of the coolest things. You, you're out. You, you wake up super early. You know, I'm I'm up. If I'm not up by four, I'm in trouble. Wow. I mean, I just, I won't get it done. So I'm up at four, you know, several hours the night before. I'm prepping the gear, making sure all, everything's charged, making sure all the memory cards are clear, you know, making sure the lenses are clean. I mean, I am ready to go the, for, you know, that night for the next day. And then when I get out there, I mean, it's go time because I've got the sunrise, the catch. I've got who knows what. I mean, it's, it's always a different situation. So it's go, 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 go. So from the from the very start, I'm on, and then by 6:30, 7 o'clock, 
I feel like it's four in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It'll, yeah. it'll, it catches up quick that's, out there. That's good sleeping weather when you're done. I mean, you you get done <laughs> from there, you pass out, man. I'll be on that water and working. And well, well see, that therein lies the problem because when I get home, then I got to start editing. <laughs> wow, dude! And just getting the footage off the memory cards to the computer is a fucking task in itself. <laughs> yeah, and, so. and you know, I, I'm taking, I'm trying to capture as much as I possibly can because right. there, there's nothing scripted about this. Right. It's it's just capture everything you can. And I told these guys, I said, you know, don't, you, you have a job to do. Don't change it because of me. You do your thing. I mean, they, they try to accommodate me, you know, wherever they can. But I try to be as, um, I, I try to be a fly on the wall. I try, I try not to be intrusive. You know, into their because right. they got a they got a system, they got a routine down. It's impressive. I mean, it, there, there's a flow. Everybody knows what they're supposed to do. There's very little space on the boat, and you know, I got to find little pockets. I got to find little nooks and crannies to kind of tuck myself into. And oftentimes, that's hanging off the rails or you know, <laughs> doing doing right. fun stuff. You know, like that. It's I, I love that stuff. That's but, crazy, man. You got to learn. You got to know their system so you can stay out of their way. Wow. Yeah, and and you know, I, I definitely have come to understand the way they operate, and I have a feel for where they're going. I mean, these guys, it's amazing. You know, they'll they get literally maybe thirty seconds between rows where they're you know pulling after they pulled up the pots, emptied the crabs into the calling box, and then they throw the, the pots back out they've got you know maybe 30 seconds before the boat comes around to another row mm. and they're just wolfing down food like within 30 seconds they're like they're sandwiched down <laughs> back to work oh, I, would, I couldn't hard. eat out there that's hardcore man <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I, I know or usually I try to unless I'm focused on the subject then I'm, I feel bad because I, I feel like I'm in their way because they don't have much time for a break so it's like I, I want them to have that I want them to get their water get their Gatorade get their whatever get their sandwich because you know they, they got to go I mean they, they got things I mean they got a, a goal to finish for the day and I just don't want to impede on that I just want to you know help showcase that but they're they're awesome I mean they're 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 great guys they're fun it's a tough job but you know it is a calling I mean, you, you got to love doing it. And that's the thing. It's like, it's crazy. You, you it, it, it can be brutal. I mean, the sun pounds on you. The, you know, it's, it could be really choppy. Sun around all day. And, you know, you stink. I mean, you, you kind of <laughs> kind of forget about that after a while. Like, you get used to it. But in the beginning, it's just like, whoa, this, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's rank. <laughs> right. Well, what's my gear stinks? <laughs> <laughs> right. So sum up this real quick because we're coming up on it, and I want to make sure we get to it. Uh, new episodes, plan content, future plans. Um, well, how big are you taking this thing? Because I think it's awesome. I mean, we're we're trying. We have a lot of stuff planned, um, but it's. It's all kind of ha- it has to play itself out. Um, Where this is kind of the, the let's let's call this the first season. This is sort of the get to know you season. Get to know the bay. Get to know what these guys do. That kind of thing. And as we go on further, you know, if people are really digging it, then we're going to expand on you know bigger things, different things. But. Um, you know, for now, it's basically what is the life of a crabber? You know, uh, it's what is in the water. You know, crabs, fish, you know, all kinds of different, you know, wildlife. So we're really just, we're documenting all that stuff first. And then we're going to get into some other stuff. Um, you know, uh, bigger, kind of deeper I got content. You. Yeah. So, uh, but, so that's, that's the goal. You know, we're going to get through one season, uh, see how it goes. Uh, so far the response has been, you know, really positive. So, you know, we're, we're growing slowly. 
Um, one thing I do want to mention that I don't know if you were going to ask this or not, but th this was really important, especially on your show. Um, the, the music for these shows, um, obviously being a musician, music is super import important to me. And I, I kind of treat these episodes the way I write a song, which usually the way I write a song, it's got to be... A, a, like a guitar riff or a melody first and then I kind of throw the lyrics on after it I mean that's just the way I write All right. and a lot of these episodes it's kind of the same way I mean I'll have all the footage but when I'm piecing together the story I gotta find music that moves me first because if I don't I won't have a feel it just it won't feel right and if you watch these episodes I, I think I hope that you'll get the impression that wow there, there's this synergy between the visuals but especially the music because I, I'm coming from the music angle first and I would love to be able to write all the music for this stuff I mean I, I hear it in my head all the time when I when I see these scenes but I just I, I can't do it I, I just I don't have the time to do it my studio is outdated as I said I've been in hibernation for a while <laughs> so <laughs> studios from uh circa 2005 so i mean it, it's just difficult to do so i'm using a lot of royalty free music and but i i'm asking help from all my fellow musicians that i know and anybody else who wants to be a part of this if they would like to submit music i would love to feature uh, especially maryland artists Nice. Um, That's cool. on these shows because this is all about Maryland this is all about the Chesapeake Bay and a lot of the musicians I mean they grew up on the bay or they've had crabs I mean it, it just it makes sense to do so if it would it would thrill me to pieces if I could incorporate Maryland artists with this it would just it would feel right yeah. so this this is a call to all of you out there if you've got music that you would like to have, you know, reviewed to possibly be put into any of these episodes, I would love to hear it. No promises, <laughs> because <laughs> I, it, it definitely, I have to be, it's got to move me in some way with, you know, the, the, the story that I'm telling. But um, all kinds of different genres, blues, country, rock, um, Orchestrated. I don't know how many people are doing orchestrated music these days. It's kind of tough, but um, I mean, just any kind of genre. There, there's no, there's no uh, off limits uh, genres with this. I dig it. Um, so, if you got something, please send it my way. I, so, I'm, I'll send you my EP's worth of music. No problem, man. Coming yeah, right up. Please do. Yeah. Please do. Coming right up. I'll email it to you tonight after the show. Yeah, I got. I'll, send, I'll even send you something. Yeah, you got stuff too. I'll yeah. send you something too. Yeah, there it is. You need different and, music and for different. And if you have the mates. ability, if you have the ability to give me both, if it has vocals, get, if you have the ability to give me both with vocals and without, um, that'd be great because then it gives me some options. Oh damn! All I yeah, have my is stuff is no vocals. Oh, that's good. For, yeah. That's good for him. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying vocals uh, is going to be ruled out, and certainly not. But it 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 helps if I have both because I, I oftentimes I'll chop it up so you know I'm using the parts that make sense with the scene, and sometimes you know the way you write a song for somebody to listen or like a radio friendly song, it's totally different. I mean, it just you know you're you're not the approach is, is different. So got it. I understand. That's cool, man. That That's awesome. exciting, man. Well, before we let you get out of here, you got to answer the signature question. I, th I think we hit all the points on the show. I'm looking at my question list. We talked about everything. It's really cool. Um, another gem of the Southern Maryland area is the Chesapeake Bay and the blue crabs that come out of the bay that everybody loves eating. So it's just really cool. Um, but put your, put your band hat back on. Take a take take a time take the uh what is it the hot tub time machine back to back to the nineties and two thousands and right. um 
We're going to play best gig, worst gig. You answer in any order you like, but you got to answer both. So what's Bronco got for the gurus tonight? Back in your band days, let us know what was the worst gig and the best gig. <laughs> um, the, the, the best gig that I had was probably Rams Head Tavern in Annapolis. Um, when I was first starting uh, my band at the time, it was called Sandbox Kings. Okay. It was just, it was the first time I had been properly mixed for live sound. Okay. And, and uh, you, you know, the show was, uh, we were opening up for somebody, I can't remember who now, but it was, it was a local artist or something. And, uh, but it was just, I remember finishing that show just saying, wow. That's the way it's supposed to sound all the time. Right. And, you know, I'm an audiophile, tone hound, and I'm so particular about that stuff as so many musicians are. And, I mean, how many times have you just, I mean, really, how many times have you been in a gig situation where it sounds the way you, or better than what you wanted? Wow. It's and, it's a handful. And this this, this was that time. I mean, just the, the, it, it sounded so good. Just every note, just I mean, just dr- was dripping with tone. And uh, I mean, it's just I could do no wrong because it sounded so good. It made me play even better. So that was that was my favorite gig. I, you know, there, other gigs had maybe some better s- stuff for like say crowd or exposure or whatever but that was probably my favorite gig because i mean i'm i'm, I'm in it for the sound really and Dang that was that was my favorite worst gig <laughs> worst gig i know what that is right away yes worst gig was when i was 13 years old at my i guess middle school talent performance <laughs> oh okay all right i dig in this answer already i love it <laughs> this is awesome so we're all seated you know it's 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 banned right so everybody there's there's a lot of kids and everybody's seated at their instrument and when you have a solo you have to stand up and do your solo and this is where i learned the rule of wrapping your cord around your strap before plugging it into your guitar oh man because i was stepping on my cord and as soon as I stood up, I unplugged myself <laughs> for my solo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I love it. That is uh, awesome. And by the time I got it back in, solo's over. <laughs> yep. You had one shot at it. So that was probably the, the, the worst the worst gig. I, my gig. My gigging experience has been fairly uneventful, you know, up and down. But th- that, that was the most... That was the most memorable of, of, of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I love man. it. That's a good answer. That's one of the most original answers to the question yet, man. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> anybody's went back to middle that, school. Middle school talent worst, show. Yeah. yeah, man. I digging that, man. I, I look, think it's the look, first, yeah. Broncos <laughs> up in the game up in this camp here. People got to take notice. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool, man. Well, Bronco, dude, I enjoyed tonight. I enjoy Crabbers. Um, keep up the good work, man. Um, again, he's out there. Photographer, so if your band need pictures, hit him up. Facebook message, please. Um, and, dude, man, this has been really cool, man. I'm digging this. Thanks. Uh, let me um, plug the channel uh, because it's not uh, it's not under my name. Um the, the YouTube channel is uh, FV Miss Paula. It stands for Fishing Vessel Miss Paula. All so right. FV Miss Paula. Perfect. And that's the same for if you do if you enter that in Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, it'll all come up. So sweet, perfect, man. Well, dude, man, this is cool. We loved having you on. Um, you're part of the Guru Network now, man. So. Awesome. Dude, dro- awesome. drop us dimes as stuff comes up, man, and maybe in another four months or so we'll have you back on, get an update what's happening, um, and just let us know what's up in the world. What do you think? Sounds good to me. Thank you guys for what you do. 
I, uh, I know it's not easy being a content creator, and you guys are definitely that, so my hat's off to you. It's, it's, you guys are, you guys are doing some real good with this. I, I you know, I'm, I'm really impressed with the sense of community with the Southern Maryland music scene. Right. Uh, in a way that I, I don't see in a lot of other areas. So, and, you know, you guys doing this is, is a part of that, so... Thank you guys. Hey, well, you're very welcome, yeah, man. Thank you for the thank you for the kind words on that. We do appreciate that. Absolutely. And it is an absolute pleasure to have you on here, man. We have had a great time. We learned a lot and got dude, we're, dude you just provided all of us with more content to go check out. Yeah, man. That's, <laughs> right. that's awesome. That's good to hear. We love that. Well, cool. Good to hear. All right, Bronco. Well, dude, we're going to cut you loose. Um, we enjoyed having you on our show, the Guitar Gurus here. Um, dude, and we look forward to talking to you in the future. All right? Sounds good, guys. Take it easy. All right, man. Do All the right. same, man. Be safe out there on the waters, man. Get it done. We'll talk soon. Will do. See ya. All right, bye. There he goes, man. Bronco Hotzik, man. That was fun, man. Dude, that that was cool, man. Dude, that guy loves this area, making a show and shit. Right. Man. He's he's he likes to create stuff, man. He's he's getting it in there. Cause that's some dedication right there. To do a documentary on crabbing, knowing what's involved to even just show up, not to mention all the work you gotta do. Just the dedication of showing up. Right. That that's awesome, man. I enjoyed that, dude. That, guy, a, that guy's cool, man. Yeah, man, that was a great interview. Um, we ran a little late. So I'm going to jump right into Guitar of the Week, knock this out, talk about it, and then we'll take a quick break, and then we're going to get Brandy Blackstone on from the town of Leonardtown, town of commissioners, and we're going to talk everything about Leonardtown and what's happening with them. Yeah. So let's do this. Guitar of the Week. We got the Fender Ventura 60s Jaguar and Ocean Turquoise this week. We're capturing the vibe of vintage Jaguars with this series. If you want the vintage Jaguar experience, you'll be impressed with the Fender Ventura 60s Jaguar solid body electric guitar. It delivers a period correct playing experience from the mid 60s C neck profile and seven and a quarter inch fretboard radius to a pair of snarkling Sneagle coil pickups. The tune is confrontational and sometimes rude, exactly how a Jaguar should sound. And with its iconic rhythm and lead tone circuits and the classic tone cut slider, you get an oppressive sonic range to explore. Complete with a floating vibrato and vintage style bridge, the Fender Ventura 60s Jaguar puts classic Jaguar vibe in your hands at an affordable value, my friend. That's what we're talking this week. I love it. Dude, it's vintage pickup design for timeless Jaguar tone. I mentioned it before, man. But Fender designed the single coil pickups in this Ventura 60s Jaguar to be as period as correct as possible. The sound is chiming and aggressive, perfect when you look when you're looking for anything besides the subtle. Need to cut through the mix, need to more engage the Jaguar's bass cut switch to cut the lows than to focus on your mids and highs. So they got everything designed in this thing to make you do what you got to do. That's versatile. what's up. It's, it's versatile as shit, man. Versatile. And and from all the likes on Facebook, we know it's popular. Um, it's in, it's eminently playable because of the mid-60s C-neck and the vintage frets. Okay? So the, vendor, the Fender Ventura 60s Jaguar is a treat to play because of the, its vintage-style neck profile. That's, that's a pleasantly stout neck. And it's increased mass yields and incredibly natural feel, as well as excellent sustained. And guitars that island music are enjoying the vintage style frets combined with the seven and a quarter inch fretboard radius. It may just be the feel you've been searching for among Fender's offset offerings. Okay, so that's something to take out and take in a note. Go down to the store, ask to see the guitar of the week. They're going to get it set up for you, plug it into an amp, and just explore on it. Try it out and see what everybody's talking about at Island Music. You know, just jump on it. So let's talk the features at a glance real quick. Of course, it's a classic Jaguar style with golden era design and appointments. Dual single coil pickups delivered the aggressive chime Jaguars are known for. 
It's got that awesome mid 60s C neck profile and seven and a quarter inch fretboard radius that deliver a period correct feel. It's got traditional Jaguar control sets with the rhythm and lead circuits and the sliders. Um, it's got the floating vibrato tailpiece, the vintage style bridge for expressive bends and, and, and warbles. Warbles? Yeah, I had, I had to throw that fancy word in there, man, <laughs> just to get a rise out of you, brother. No, warble. But, dude, that's the Fender Ventura 60s Jaguar and Ocean Turquoise had a... As the selling points in store, I have you holding the guitar. That's what I'm talking to you about on the sales floor. Right. Um, and you're there, you're sitting there, and you're checking it out. It's a fantastic guitar, man. It's Fender Jaguar. I, I have a number of them offsets, Jazz Masters, Jaguars, but the Jaguar will always have a special place for me. It's it's dead center in the wall. Yeah. It's, it's the one. So It's what I stare at the whole time I'm here. Right. So I'm down with it, but here's the tech specs on this puppy, all right? It's a solid body guitar. It's a Vendor, the Vendor Ventura 60s Jaguar body shape. It's a right-handed model I had, six strings, Oddler body, a gloss polyester finish. Um, the color was ocean turquoise. The neck material was maple. The fingerboard radius was seven and a quarter inches. The fingerboard material was the Poe Ferro. The fingerboard inlays were just basic white dots. It's a 22 fretter, 24 inch scale length. Uh, the nut width is 1.65 inches. The nut material is a synthetic bone, so it's not going to break. So that's awesome. Um, the bridge tail piece is that Jaguar bridge with the vintage style floating tremolo that they're known for. Um, of course, what's awesome on the headstock is the vintage style tuners makes changing strings a, a cinch, man. Really, it does. Once you know how they operate, it's awesome. You'll never want to go back to the other ones. I can tell you that. Uh, of course, it got the, vin the Fender Vintage Jaguar single coil pickups. It's got the awesome control set that Jaguars are known for, and it comes with a gig bag. And that's your guitar of the week, my friend. Beautiful. Man. And, and guess what the price is? Oh, I got, oh, man, I haven't done this in months. Right. What do you think? The price on this bad boy, I'm going right. to say $7.99. Now, this is the Fender Vendor Ventura 60s series. I know. They made in these... Mexico. Okay. So it's coming down to, to work a little bit more than that. We're at 1024 for this okay. model. Now. See, I'm out, I'm out of practice here. Right. You got to get back in the game. I do, it's the, it did post COVID blues, brother. That's right. I forgot how much stuff cost. Hey, and that's fair, man. Everything's been locked down. <laughs> and I know how you roll, man. So I get it. It's all good. Yeah. Audience understands. But, dude. That's the guitar of the week this week. Isla Music providing the, that for us every week we're doing the show. Yeah. Glad they're back open. Everything's got to get sorted out, but we got to do something big to, to celebrate when everything gets back to our normal state of affairs. Yeah, I actually went in and spent money over the weekend. Oh, awesome. I did get some bass strings. That's what I got. Oh, <laughs> they, got the, they got the boomers in stock, dude. I got them. Yeah, man. I got them. Dude, I love it, dude. Yeah, so I mean, any way, any way to support, and of course, you know, my contribution was very small instead of bass strings. I mean, you know, but still, it's just making the appearance and picking up something and just getting back into the the groove of the community at the music store. It's, it was nice, right? And and I look forward to going back there this Friday to get next week's guitar of the uh, week, uh, yeah. getting on that process and, and getting back into that swing of thing and seeing everybody at the store and you know just getting back into the rhythm of it all. You know they got it really nice in there right now. Hey, it is very nice. In there. Um, I love how they did all the, the 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 Van Halen type paint job over where the lesson rooms is. Yeah, it's a real classy move. It was it, cool. It's cool, man. I mean, I. I mean, it was better than what was there before. It's relevant to what the store is. Yeah. The owner, Keith, he's a big-time Van Halen guy. That's awesome. That's his thing. And I get it, man. Yeah. It looks great. Yeah. Fantastic, man. They changed the op the entrance on the right when you first walk in. Right. Got rid of the cubes with the folded-up shirts. Nobody knew they sold shirts. Right. Now they're all displayed on racks out there. So, wow. Check that out. Right. You know, who right. would have thought? So they did a lot of great things while they were closed. And get in there, check it out. Yeah, man. This is Island Music. Man, La Plata, Maryland, Charles Street. But dude, I love being a part of having them a part of the show, man. Yeah, absolutely. 
You know, I mean, I got, I still do my Craigslist capers. I mean, that's just how it goes in my world, man. But yeah, you know, you find a good deal, you can't say. I that. know that's what I'm saying. But I go down there and buy all my accessory stuffs. I mean, I just got some like tuners, strings. I went and got some other maintenance type products, fret polishing, you know, stuff like that. So yeah. Dude, I'm always in there. I'm poking around looking for something new all the time, man. You Hell never yeah. know what I might bring home, though. You never know. Dude, I just got to I have to take executive privilege, but I got to know when to say when, man, so I don't lose executive privilege. Well, that's the key. You know that balance. You got to keep that balance. Right. But, dude, this, man, the show is fantastic tonight, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it, man. This yeah. is awesome. This is cool. I think we're going to take a quick break. Which I mean by that is is because we're not back to um, any sanctioned, sponsored stuff at this moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break, get reset back up, just play a sounder, and, and come back. And we're going to um, get Miss Blackstone on from the town of Littertown. And we're going to talk everything about what's going on, man. I've been looking forward to this call, man. Yeah. This is going to be cool. I mean, Bronco started off the night right hitting the points with the crabbers now we're going to get to talk to brandy blackstone at town of leonardtown and get to hear everything about leonardtown and what they got planned for us man this is kind of cool yeah it's exciting. exciting i am very excited about this man cool all right dude but let's do it we'll take a break and we'll come back and get this done then we'll get on out of here for the night what do you think yeah buddy cool it's guitar gurus with dan and dan we're southern maryland's number one choice for music talk radio we'll be right back after this quick break What's up, y'all? This is Sam Grow, and you're listening to the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show. The Southern Maryland Guitar Gurus, the only guys that would do a live broadcast from Dog Man. We see each other through different eyes. Oh, yeah, we're back from break. It's the Guitar Gurus with Dan and Dan. We're Southern Maryland's number one choice for music talk radio. How are you tonight, Mr. Albin? Ah, uh, electric, man. Electric. Love and life, happy, happy, happy. I can't. I, that's, I always use the same adjectives because I'm just telling you how I feel. It's the truth. I'm happy. I dig it, dude. Well, yeah. You, and I'm thirsty, and you know what that means. Oh well, you know. There it is. Let that be quenched, shall we? Oh man, dude, I've drinking so much tonight, man. The shows have just have been on fire tonight, man. Um. We got one guest left. It's our last featured guest. It's our premier guest this week, and it's and, it, and her name is Brandy Blackstone, and she's from the Town of Leonardtown Commissioners. Uh, we have some big news that we're reporting on that we've teamed up with them on, and I'm just excited for this interview, man. Uh, how are you feeling about it, man? I, I've been waiting for this uh, diligently. Like I've been very, very focused on this in particular tonight in the last few days because of what we're getting ready to put out there about what we're getting ready to do. Right. I can't believe that we're getting ready to do this. It's it's amazing to me. Yeah. So, dude, without further ado, man, I'm going to get the phone system crank and give me some soothing tones, and let's get this going on, man. All right. It's the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show, episode 76, right here, right now. Soothing tones. Yeah, we're going to get Brandy on the phone from the town of Leonardtown. This is going to be an awesome interview tonight, man. Come on, Brandy, pick up. My number's right. Oh, man. Hello? Hey, Brandy, it's Dan from Guitar Gurus. You want to go on the air? Oh, why not? Sure. Let's oh, do it. Awesome. This is so great. Um, I got my co-host, Dan Albin, with me. Dan Albin, say hi to Brandy. Good evening, Brandy. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Dan? Doing real good. I want to start out by saying thank you for taking the time to be here on the show with us. We do appreciate that very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Um, th this is perfect. Um, you reached out to the show. Um, and when I was reading the emails, it was really surreal for me. I was like, wow, the, the, the program me and Mr. Alden put together is at the level where, where town governments are taking a notice. And that, oh, and, and that's just humbling to me a, a, as a creator of content, as, as a purveyor of, 
of Southern Maryland, you know, I, I'm just appreciative that y'all saw what we're trying to do and reached out and want to partner with us. This is really cool. Oh, it's our pleasure. Um, I mean, you put out a quality show. Um, I mean, you do a really great, you have a great reflection on Southern Maryland. So we, we definitely are happy to include you. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, um, I want to, I want to, um, this is our interview with you. This is our welcome them at home party with town and Leonard town. So I want to start out right and give you a chance to, to, to give the audience, uh, 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 tell the audience what Leonardtown, Maryland is all about. Give us a taste of what it's what it's like to be a, a, a Friday night in Leonardtown during the summer, you know? Oh, wow. Well, first of all, Leonardtown uh, is a small town in southern Maryland. Um, it has old world charm. Um, it has one of the only remaining uh, town squares that are that's in, intact uh, currently. And, uh, you know, it has the historic buildings. But um, it's also a really vibrant town. Um, it offers a, a great mix of, um, you know, shops and galleries and world-class restaurants. Um, there's really a lot to do there. So, um, I mean, boaters, um, I mean, boating is really, um, you know, popular here in Southern Maryland, of course. Um, boaters can dock at the wharf and travel up to Leonardtown Square and enjoy, enjoy an evening of shopping. Uh, and then take in dining and drinks on the square while listening to live music. Um, we have some wonderful uh, restaurants right there on the square, like um, The Rex, uh, Dos Amigos, and we have a couple of new restaurants. Sweet Bay and Antoinette's Garden is a wine bar, um, so that they can enjoy family-friendly concerts that are free and open to the public. Um, could take in classes at the wharf you know with spice studio fitness classes or do paddleboard classes with roots up and fitness um you can paddle on breton bay from uh port of leonard town winery park through the mackintosh run uh and paddle all the way to the wharf and back and then stop for a glass of wine at the winery the port of leonard town winery and enjoy live music there um there's many restaurants. In fact, a lot of the restaurants have um, live music. Um, the Rex, Old Town Pub, Front Porch, and uh, Social Coffee House even hosts um, movie screenings and has mixology classes. There's a lot of cool stuff. Um, there's art shows, uh, receptions, book readings, uh, art workshops, cooking classes. Uh, we even have an escape room, Southern Maryland's escape room, which is really popular as well. So there's something to do for everyone there. Yeah, right about that. I I personally love the Leonardtown area. Um, b before the COVID thing hit, during my day job, I traveled all around Southern Maryland selling stuff and, and meeting people around the area. And I always find Leonardtown to be one of my favorite stops. Oh, and, definitely. And yeah, we worked on a project right down where the... Where the where the water is, I, it's literally the last house on the left before you can you, you hit the parking lot to get docked. You yeah. Know, you oh, know, okay. That old that's house cool. that's getting rehabbed. I, I did. I sold some materials there, and I've been all through it. And and that that's a pretty historic house right there. And you just have that that whole town. It's got a charm to it that is unlike any other in the area. I yeah, mean, it's I, pretty unique, isn't it? Yeah. You yeah. go to Solomon's. It's a different vibe. Mm -hmm. You get to Leonard Town, you feel like you're home. I, I you just, really do, yeah. Yeah, and and I love it. And, and I think you really you painted the picture perfect. I was like, wow, she's right. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, <laughs> been there, hundred, oh, been there oh, uh, hundreds of times, and still just want to keep going back. Right. <laughs> and you know what? I'm I'm not from here originally. Um, and my husband and I were in the military, and we we moved here, and we raised our kids here. We've been here for like 27 years, and I used to bring my kids to the um, events in Leonardtown all the time. You know, the beach party, Christmas on the square, the the trick or treat on the square, and I just loved those events. And uh, when I had an opportunity to come and work for the town and help actually create those events for for other you know families it, it was just a wonderful opportunity i really loved it awesome that's awesome yeah we'd love to hear that all right l let's shift gears a little let's talk about leonard town's presence on the internet and how it ties together with our show and what you have planned for us that of course well with the circumstances unfortunately we can't be on the square and and in 
at the wharf at this time for our events. I mean, normally our events draw like thousands of people each year. Right. Um, so we had to switch up gears and find a, a different way of doing things. Um, so after the success of our first virtual event, which was the um, Leonardtown uh, Earth Day event, um, we went ahead and, and launched an online platform called Leonardtown Arts and Entertainment Online. Um, the, and it's in partnership with the commissioners of Leonardtown, the Leonardtown Business Association, and the St. Mary's County Arts Council. They all partnered together to create this platform. And it's run through the um, Leonardtown's tourism website. Visit leonardtownmd.com. And, and also through the, the Town of Leonardtown Facebook page. And it features online classes. Um, you know, you can learn to, you know, cook. You could take cooking classes, fitness classes, um, or you can learn something new, like um, how to dance salsa or tap dance or to knit. And um, we have original shows and live events. Um, so anything from concerts to wine tastings. And we have some really great music variety shows. We have um, the Leonardtown Virtual Artist Showcase that features. Um, musicians, dancers, performing artists. So it's new emerging to well-established artists. And the first one was hosted by Robbie Booth and um, Donovan Farrell. Oh, yeah. And yeah, you know them. And oh, they've yeah. done such, did such an amazing job on that show that we spun it off and gave them their own show. So, so now they're hosting um, the Friday night, or uh, Robbie and Donovan Friday night party every Friday at eight o'clock. And um, we've had, between the two shows, we've had some amazing guests. We've had um, Philip Michael Parsons, uh, Wes Rice, Latrice Carr, Dylan Galvin, Wesley Spangler, and, and, and much more. Wow. And um, we're excited to announce that one of our new premier shows is Guitar Gear Gurus. So. Ooh. That's so quick, and you hear all the uh, yeah, dude. I'm just I, I'm just thrilled because um, you guys reached out and asked about it, and I was like, it's the community. Sign me up. Yes, you know, there was never a doubt in my mind, and and to be in with those guys that we know, Robbie Booth, Donovan Farrell, Wesley Spangler, yeah. Philip Michael Parsons, it's like past guru I guess, past guru I guess. Yep, know all about them. It's just. It's just our whole music community is so much tighter together now, I believe, with our show out there and people knowing that they have a chance for their music to be heard. It is tremendous for the area. And when me and Mr. Alban decided to do this thing, we, we decided to do it because we just, for the love of broadcasting, you know, that that's a hobby to us. And, and to do it at this high level with... It's just amazing to see the response. It's really great. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and we're excited with the response we're seeing to the virtual platform. Um, you know, we started it. We just wanted to, um, you know, be able to feature a lot of the programming that people came to love with um, all the events. Um, and then um, to highlight the amazing talent that we have. I mean, the people that we just mentioned, um, you know, uh, and it's just had such an amazing response. It's increased our viewership on, on YouTube, the town's YouTube page and Facebook and, and the website. And it's, it's just been a really amazing response. Very exciting. Right. Um, that leads into the next thing. Tell us about this Summer Music Festival and how we might be able to help you with that. Oh, well, yeah, there's a great opportunity. Well, um, it, once again, you know, things are just starting to open up. So uh, it might be quite some time before we'll be able to be to full capacity with our concerts and events. Right. Like I mentioned, we, they usually draw like thousands of people every year. So, uh, you know, that's not something we're going to be able to do any anytime soon. So uh, we're looking at how to do our events in the future. Um, even if we are able to have some people, we're not going to be able to have everyone. So we're looking at doing those virtually as well. So um, we'll be able to, people will be able to enjoy them from their homes, the comforts of their home. And um, we would love to have guitar gurus come out and, and uh, you know, help interview our, our guests, um, the artists, and uh, maybe do a live shows with us for the music festival this year. Right. I, my gears are grinding and I'm sure we'll have some discussions all fair. But I, I already got a whole vision of how we could really do some cool things. I really oh, that do. sounds awesome. Right. And um, especially if the cast of characters that we've mentioned before are going to be involved, 
What? You won't wait. Wait till you see what we can do when I get oh, all that's these. that's amazing. When we get, <laughs> well, well, hmm, go ahead. You, you get all these creative minds in one room, and we put a goal in front of it and say, "Hey, let's smash this goal." Some pretty amazing stuff usually happens, and uh, and I, I I can't wait to be a part of it. To be uh, to be honest. Oh, that's awesome! I'm so glad to hear that. Well, let me. We have an amazing lineup. We've got once again Robbie Booth. Right. Um, we've got Wes Rice. Levi Stevens, the Ryan Forrester Band, Hydra FX, and Sam Grow. <laughs> Everybody, all those guys have been on the show. So it's, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it, it's, it's just a home run, and, and with the stuff I have planned, all these guys are going to be on board. And I, I think this might go down in the record books as the most unique event that Leonardtown ever pulls off. I, I think so as well and and really I think with with you guys involved and you knowing everyone I think it's just going to be a really great party yeah that's see now you now you've piqued my interest here this is what I <laughs> this is what I like awesome. and, but it's 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 really nice that with this given the situation that you guys are finding a way to keep everything going in its own way with, with the virtual world and still getting people involved and having content for people to enjoy whether it be this you know from their own homes or it still it still gives them something to do right even if we're not all together in the square you know i get that and we're we're happy to be on the ground level so to speak of this new new way of doing things this is this is great uh, awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's been wonderful doing it. Um, it. It's really provided an opportunity for the, the entertainers to get out there, the performers. Um, you know, there's, there were so many gigs canceled, Yeah. Um, you know, at the start of this. So um, it, they seem really appreciative and, and they've just jumped at it. When I, you know, reached out to people, there, there was no hesitation. Oh, yeah, I'd love to do it. It's just been awesome. Uh, That's that great Southern Maryland community yeah, right that, there. Right? I, the Southern Maryland hospitality is what I like, I'd like to say. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think someone on your show was talking about the, the culture, the, the climate that's happening here in Leonardtown. Um, you know, something liken it to, to Seattle during the grunge, you know, the start of the grunge era, you know. Um, I really do think something like that is happening here. Yeah, and, and the, the beauty of what I think what we, me and Dan always talk about is we actually are documenting this docu, documenting this part of history right now. So everything that's going on the last you know couple of years leading up to now and in the future, we have this documentation of this this history in our time this time in our history. And right. It's, it's really cool to have that. It, it is. Really. We're on to something. Something's happening here. Yeah, I think everybody involved can feel it. I, I think people who are, are witnessing it, tuning in. I, th- I think that yeah, I think everybody can feel that. Yeah. And and with with now with these di- with the different lifestyle that everybody's had to adjust to over the past couple months, the online viewership of content is just through the roof, just because of just of how that all is playing out. So you know, it's just the. Um, you know, making lemonade out of lemons. You know, that's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, and I think it's going to be kind of cool how this thing's going to come together with how I think the interviews should go down, and we can keep the whole show like really connected. It's going to be kind of cool. I can't wait to have meeting creation meetings. I really can't. Yeah, wait. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be something. We're going to be burning up some Zoom time. That's right. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Sounds awesome. Looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah. All right, Brandy, you've been fantastic tonight. Um, when um, before we let you go, two more things. Uh, when will people be able when they visit these websites? When will our content be on the site for people to start enjoying? Actually, uh, I've posted it already. With there's a good portion of your shows already there to enjoy. Um, so when you log on to visit LeonardtownMD.com, um, there's different sections that you can go to. Um, if you go to the um, a E feature presentations. Um, that's where you'll find the Guitar Guru show. Awesome! Thank you. Okay. I, I yeah. love that. I, that that's awesome. That just tickles me every time I hear that. <laughs> it's awesome. It. it is so awesome. This is cool. great. Um, all right, so 
we got one last question for you, then we'll let you go. But we'll be definitely talking by emails in the future because we got a lot of things to talk about. So that that's cool. So you got a friend here, so never fear. All right? Oh, nice. Perfect. Awesome. So th- we're going to play the game with you. We call it best gig, worst gig. You answer in any order you like, but you got to answer both. This is the show's signature question. So um, I know that you're not an acting musician, so we're going to let you, do, you we're going to let you play in this sandbox the way you want to. So we'll let you answer it how you like. What do you got for us tonight? Okay. Well, let's see. My gig, of course, is planning events for the town. Sure. And... Um, the best part of my gig is, you know, just being able to recreate these amazing events that people just love. I mean, traditions, families, you know, um, love. People come from all over the world to these events. And to be a part of recreating those and bringing those to life and, and uh, just seeing people enjoy them, um, that's the best best part of my gig. Sure. Um, the worst part is, um, you know, it takes you know, lots of hours, long time uh, to plan these events, and then to have it have to be canceled. Uh, you know, for weather like the one that you guys were a part of last year, the Arts and Entertainment um, First Friday. You guys right. were all set to, to do a gig with us, and and we had to cancel it because of the weather. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, with the pandemic, you know. Um, so that I have to say is the worst part of my gig. I can, yeah, I get and that. That's heartbreaking. I know. Yeah, it. it is. I know. If if the equipment wasn't so expensive, I would. We would totally would have been there last year. But with the rain and electric and, and equipment, you just mm-hmm. you never know, and you can never be too safe because that's oh, definitely not. Yeah, no. I mean, everything. You know, the only thing we were able to hold was the drum circle, right. <laughs> and uh, wow. that was popular. It, it, it drew a huge crowd that year. Um, but yeah, it's it's it it ha- thankfully hasn't happened too often since I've been working for the town. But this year, of course. Uh, but we found, like we talked about, we found a way to make it work. Good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, that the, you hit all the points tonight. I appreciate the time. I, it's super awesome of you to, to come on. I know how we tape and the and all the requirements that you made time for us tonight. And I I just. Thank you for that. That's super cool. Sure, it was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, Brandy, I, I'm going to say thank you also for me. Um, I appreciate all the support that you guys are giving uh, to to all the arts in general, and just how it's an, it's amazing to me that in the in the Southern Maryland area, there's there's that pocket that you guys are in that Leonard town and you're so arts focused yeah to me that yeah. just that makes me smile yeah so i'm very i'm very happy that you guys are working hard to keep that going and we all on the outside of that appreciate that so keep keep doing the hard work the good work <laughs> i will and um, thank you again look forward to talking to you guys soon right. i'd like to give a quick shout out to the saint mary's county arts council yep because without them, you know, this wouldn't have happened. Shout yeah. out to Wednesday Davis, correct? Yes, yeah. yes, definitely. Yeah. Right, and, and tell Sheila I'll be contacting her. I'm gonna get. The, oh, awesome! I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah. I, I'm gonna get that done in the next couple of weeks. So just tell her to be on the lookout, okay? Yes, uh, well, looking forward to hearing some of our drummers on there. Yeah. All right, and if you can, man, please join us on premiere night on Facebook. We have a whole. Um, chat section that we all get together and chat during the episode so you're more than welcome to join us and it's free oh wonderful i'll, I'll look for that it's thank fun. you it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun so it'll be cool all right all right well you got a fan here <laughs> awesome but love hearing that brandy yeah. and and thank you again for coming on tonight but we'll check you on the next one all right all right sounds good have a good evening i right, do the same you we'll too. see ya okay bye bye, bye. There goes Brandy Blackstone, town of Leonard Town, man. That was cool, dude. That that was awesome. I, I just want to take this time to say thank you to her. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you, town of Leonard Town. But more importantly, thank you, Southern Maryland. Yes. I mean, without y'all's support, they wouldn't have taken notice. You know what I mean? We can make a show, but without the people calling in, putting in the time with us, you know, like my co-host Dan Alban showing up here every week 
doing his thing. I mean, COVID, he was at home calling in every week. So thank you to that. Appreciate that. Um, thank you, David Higgins. Big part of the show. He's here every yeah. week almost. He missed, you know, he missed his time here and there, but that's whatever. That's life. That's work. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. what happens. Shout out Sean Kirkpatrick, another big part of the show, man. Yeah. Showing up every week. And we're all not paid. We're doing this because we want to do it. <laughs> we're all not uh, paid. paid. I mean, yeah. the sponsors we have all went to equipment. We didn't, there was no keep it to yourself. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. Right. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. it just thank you to everybody because this was my vision. And without everybody coming together and, and acting with me, it doesn't happen. And we're really seeing the fruits of our labor pay off. And wow, dude. It's just one of those things, man. This is pretty cool, man. Yeah. It's just like doing what you love, man. And sometimes it, it pays off big time. And one of, and that's just, that's tonight, man. That, that's huge. Yeah, dude. I mean, who would have thought sitting around one night bullshitting, saying, yeah, oh, we should do a podcast. Yeah, why not? Let's give it a shot. And it hasn't stopped since. <laughs> right. I know, man. I know. And then, and the original idea was just to talk about albums we loved. And then when, when they threw us a curveball, I said, I got something for them. Uh-huh. I've been holding out, you know? That, right. You know? But then we came out with this format, and it's been... It's awesome, dude. But thank you again, sir. Um, hey, man. We did this together, man. Right. And I think both of us can say shout out to the lovely wives of the Guitar Gurus. Well, they they definitely they, win the Golden Guru Award. Right. In our book, they both are champs. And they without us, them yeah. without them being them, this wouldn't even exist. So big shout out, Trish Galliano. And my wife. <laughs> She's okay with that. Trust All right. me. I got you. That's fine. I, that's why I, I threw it to you, She's dude. okay with that. You all know who she is. Come right, on. right. But, you know, without them, we wouldn't be able to do this every week because, you know, they let us They let us do our thing. That's it, man. And they, I shouldn't say they let us do our thing. They support us. Right. They support us, and, and they see the value that we're – that they get it, and, and like I said, it's – all these circumstances came together, and what and what we have is the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show, music talk radio for Southern Maryland's blue collar yeah. musicians. That's right. And the culture, and what's what's relevant in Southern Maryland. That's the charm of the show. We could talk music, or we can talk. We talked to Bronco tonight about him making cra- the Crabbers videos, and I'm still down with it because he's looking for music from the southern maryland area to put in his programming and he exactly. used to play so that's relevant it's all yeah. relevant there it is man then we have brandy on from the town of leonardtown because they want our show on their website to help promote the southern maryland brand right and that's just phenomenal to me man it is, it is we're going through a an incredible time in southern maryland with the with the community it's just incredible to me right oh and another big part of the show wow i'm I'm glad we're getting to say this now but another big part of the show and i cannot overstate it enough is keith grasso at island music for supplying the guitar of the week yeah locking it in man and that's just cool man very cool very cool and we love that segment, and I love br- bringing the Jaguar back for the first guitar back, <laughs> man. That's me, man. I'm a Fender guy. I don't right. hide it. Everybody no. knows I'm a Fender guy, yeah, but I like, like yeah. my heavy metal guitars, too, from the other brands, sure. but at my core, I'm a Fender guy. Yeah. And That's my thing, and I know you are, good. too. So. I am, too. It's, it's all a, good. It's, we get it. Dude, Action Pack show, two hours in three minutes so far yeah dude that's awesome that's that's great i mean dude we're hitting the the marks man and yeah. having two feature guests like this the action-packed night man um I, i'm ready to get out of here man what do you think unless you got anything else you want to say this week uh, i think we hit it the home runs man I, oh yeah nothing else i got to say man we, we tonight's been awesome yeah i mean the, the the ball's been hit over the over the wall into the parking lot man the game's over we crushed it. Their guests crushed it. 76 is in the books. Check that out. That's all I got. I am good to go, man. Yeah, I think we're going to call this episode 76, The Partnership. You yeah. know? 
because of the partnership with the town of Leonardtown, man. Yeah. That's cool. And like I said, I'm already brainstorming about the virtual concert and us doing the interviews of, of all the musicians on site. Yeah. I want to talk to you all fair. I'm not going to say it right now because it's raw, raw, raw yeah, thrown yeah, back and forth. We're going to have ourselves a nice brainstorming session. I, I got some couple things in mind, too. It's, it's really awesome, man. Yeah, it's going to be cool. But, dude, it's Guitar Gurus. It's Dan and Dan. We're Southern Maryland's number one choice for Music Talk Radio. We're coming up on a two-hour and five-minute mark. Again, special thank you to all the Southern Maryland listeners out there. You guys are awesome. All the musicians, you are our brothers and you are our sisters. Um, We are here for you guys, and we just want to talk about your bands, and we'll be having a whole bunch of other shows planned coming up, man. But, dude, I'm out. We're good. You good? Good. All right, dude, Southern Maryland Guitar Gurus, Dan and Dan. We're Southern Maryland's number one choice for music talk radio. We'll catch you guys next week.